In Florida last weekend, conservatives gathered at the Tampa Convention Center for the Turning Point USA Student Action Summit, where a number of prominent Republicans spoke, such as Ron DeSantis, Ted Cruz, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Donald Trump. On Saturday, a group of extremists rallied outside of that convention center with swastikas, SS logos, anti-Semitic caricatures and literature, as well as Nazi flags. Turning Point USA insists the protesters have no affiliation with their conference and, quote, 100 percent condemns those ideologies in the strongest of terms, adding the protesters have nothing to do with TPUSA, our event or our students. Conservatives again and again say that they do not support right wing extremism, but some conservatives have been embracing leaders with far right visions like Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban, a MAGA darling lauded on Fox News for being tough on immigration. At May's CPAC meeting in Budapest, Trump called Orban, quote, a great leader, a great gentleman. Orban also spoke at that same event. When asked why the event was being held in Hungary, CPAC chair Matt Schlapp said it represents Christian conservative values that American conservatives want to replicate here in the U.S. More recently, Orban has spoken out against creating, quote, peoples of mixed race. His comments were condemned by individuals in his own government who called his speech pure Nazi text and worthy of Goebbels, a reference to the man who ran Hitler's Nazi propaganda. But the ideology championed by Orban is not damning enough for some American conservatives. Orban is still scheduled to speak at the big CPAC conference in August. Other invited speakers include, of course, Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, and more. CPAC says Orban is the leading voice in Europe fighting for his people and everyone who believes in national sovereignty. And in one interview, Matt Schlapp said, let's listen to the man speak. We'll see what he says. And if people have a disagreement with something he says, they should raise it. We'll see what he says. We've heard plenty from Orban already, but apparently CPAC is hungering for more. Joining me now to talk about far-right ideology and its extremism is Rachel Kleinfeld. She's a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Rachel, thank you so much for joining us today. That's a lot to digest, right? What does all of that say about the state of American conservatism that CPAC is willing to put Viktor Orban on its main stage? You know, there's a fight at the heart of American conservatism, and this Trumpist faction, which has over 100 people who have won the primaries, which has a number of members of Congress, this Trumpist faction is really trying to emulate the strategy that Orban used in Hungary to turn his country from a full democracy to a failing democracy. It's now been downgraded by Freedom House um, to being a, only a partial democracy. That's what they would like to see in America, and that's why they put the last CPAC conference in Budapest. That's why Tucker Carlson went over there and praised Orban to the skies, and it's why they still have him as a speaker, even after his own foreign policy advisor quit because of these really quite Nazi-like remarks. Rachel, you've written extensively about the link between militias and some inside the GOP who are starting to normalize their interaction with the democratic process. Why is it part of the Republican Party, or why is part of this party sliding towards these anti-democratic tendencies? Because they're winning while doing it. As long as they keep winning at the ballot box while threatening their own colleagues with guns, like Eric Greitens' ads, while uh, running ads that threaten the, the other side, um, as long as these are winning tactics, they will keep winning. And as long as they keep winning, they will keep gaining power. And that power is really damaging to American democracy. It's starting by the way, within the party. And that's just what Orban did as well. The first thing he did when he was out of power was to purge his own party of anyone not personally loyal to him. America has a lot more guns, so a purging in America happens at the point of a gun. And, and that's what we're seeing with Proud Boys infiltrating the Nevada uh, Republican Party, the Miami Republican Party, and a score of local Republican parties. In our current moment, political violence and threats of violence like you speak of right now, they're becoming more and more regular and unfortunately more tolerated by some. You write the events on January 6th are not past. They are prelude. Rachel, that's an incredibly ominous warning. How is it that the more reasonable voices are not drowning out the extremist ones? 
You know, every time someone speaks up, even a very deep uh, Republican like Liz Cheney, they get kicked out of the party. They get censured. They get stripped of their roles. Um, the, the most uh, moderate in regards to democracy, even if they're very conservative in their ideology, are just leaving the party altogether. They're not running for re-election. So you're not hearing their voices because they're being picked off one by one. And what they really need to do is group together and speak as a whole, because we know from other countries that when there's a faction that's anti-democratic like this, we saw it with Mussolini in the 20s and um, in Italy, and we've seen it in a number of other countries, you have to stand up to it. You cannot try to co-opt that faction. The people trying to co-opt it always lose. So what does standing up to it look like to you? You've done a really deep dive into this. You are a student of some very scary extremism and that ideology. Do you have a suggestion other than just kind of banding together, which makes sense, right? But how do you really effectuate that change to make sure that we don't have an American democracy that ends up dead? Well, uh, the first thing we need to do really is for politicians to disavow violence as part of their campaign strategy. We've had over 100 campaign ads made this cycle by Republicans threatening the other side, threatening their own colleagues, holding guns. Um, that just can't happen. The Congress needs to uh, bipartisanly come together and say, look, if you issue these kinds of threatening ads, you don't get committee assignments, you don't get party money, you, you get stripped of various uh, things that you would like to have as a member of Congress. We can't keep them from being elected as members of Congress, but you can keep them from gaining a lot of power. That's one thing that can happen. The next thing that can happen is that Americans can stop electing them. There's a real feeling among many Americans that the other side is so scary that we have to allow these anti-democratic and even violent individuals to win because otherwise you'll see the downfall of American democracy. It's time to wake up. The other side is really much less scary on both sides, the rank and file other side, less scary than we think. There's a huge amount of misinformation. We need to realize that that we stand together on keeping a system in which we can vote people out, and we need to keep doing that. And to enable that, we need things like ranked choice voting and open primaries. 90% of congressional seats are now safe. People only fear a challenge from their own side, so they get more and more extreme. To stop that, we need to let people run Democrats against Democrats, Republicans against Republicans, so that you can vote Republican, but for a pro-democracy Republican. Rachel Kleinfeld, thank you so much for being here. It's um it's a scary time, but I believe, and it sounds like you also believe as well, that there are solutions. We just have to really be able to embrace them. So thanks for sharing your insight with us today. Thank you.